for, uh, there's a registered speaker. Alex, back, back by Ale. Um, it's Alexandra Tubielli. Uh, the G is silent, but <laughs> it's, uh, you know, my maiden name was Ward, so a lot of times people ask me, really, did you have to change it? Uh, so could, I wanted to say firstly. Could you state your address too, please? Sorry, my address is 33 Middle Street. Again, um, Alexandra Tubielli, uh, 33 Middle Street. Thank you. Um, I first of all I'd like to say good evening to you, City Council, and uh, Mayor Elliott, and to those of us that remain in the chamber, as well as the other officers whom, whose names and title escape me. Um, I've had the opportunity before to speak within City Council chambers um, regarding different topics, and I do consider it an honor, and also my personal duty to be an active participant in the political process, um, especially on the local level. And I first would like to thank you all um, for your time and your attention this evening. I'd also like to share that previously my experiences um, after publicly sharing my opinion have not always been great. Um, I was approached recently by several informal acquaintances on separate occasions who had different opinions than those that I voiced at those other city council meetings. Um, I've been challenged, my judgment has been questioned, and I've been told directly that my opinion didn't count or matter because I didn't agree with what they had to say or what was right according to Lowell or true Lowellians or real Lowellians or the tradition of this city. Um, I mention this because I think it's relevant to the conversation about this portrait. By going on record before and by choosing to go on record again tonight, um, I know that I'll probably be immortalized in some YouTube archive somewhere on the internet um, with this proof of me speaking and showing my opinions for um, all to see and to critique. Um, to assume that this will have no impact on how people look at me or treat me or my family is, is foolish. But speaking as a citizen, a voter, and an everyday person who doesn't hold an office, um, I have felt negative repercussions for voicing a different opinion. Is that fair? No. Is it right? I would also say no again. But it is what it is, and unfortunately, the desire for calm in your own personal life or self-preservation uh, often takes precedence over choosing to engage in the political process, which again, I respect. Um, but this is a problem that I feel like that we're dealing with not just in the city or in the state or even in this country, but I think globally. Um, that being said, and knowing how difficult it is to voice your opinion, I'd like to take this time to applaud the City Council for shouldering the responsibilities um, and the thankless job often for being the voice of the community and representing the needs and the wants of the people, especially when you are subject to criticism and scathing opinions. Um, but I'm here this evening to share my opinion on the portrait of former Mayor Patrick Murphy. I wanted to share my opinion about this portrait and related matters because, and I could be mistaken, um, I am concerned that my opinion isn't currently being reflected within this council. Some of the concern for wanting to create guidelines for the mayoral portrait is that not doing so could give future leaders the option to have portraits of them however they wanted to be shown, including scantily clad representations of themselves. Uh, and I've talked about this with some of my coworkers and some of my neighbors, and most of the ladies agree that if by some crazy chance Tom Hardy or Brad Pitt was mayor and he wanted to be scantily clad, they would agree with that picture. Um, I think even in that scenario, despite my personal opinion, um, that that would still be inappropriate. And I empathize completely with where that concern comes from. But in this specific case regarding Mayor Murphy's portrait, I don't feel that his picture, or the picture that he chose, is, um, could be put into that category. On a personal note, when I first saw the portrait, the first thing I noticed was how different it was from any other portrait that I've seen in our city hall or any other official portrait in a government office. I did pause and reflect on the past two years with Mr. Murphy as mayor of our city, the impact that he had on our city, and what we as Llewellyans and citizens of the world can learn, good and bad, if you will, from his legacy. I also thought about what he highlighted in his portrait and why he did so, and why, what exactly he wanted to be remembered for. All of these things, I would assume, are a part of the purpose and the tradition of mayoral portraits. On a further personal note, um, as a relatively new parent, 
um, I was immediately and deeply touched in a truly positive and meaningful way by Mayor Murphy's choice to include his family in this portrait. Um, I'm paraphrasing here, but essentially I read or watched again on a YouTube video that um, Councillor Mercier, and I'm not singling you out personally, but just for the purpose of this speech, um, said that choosing to include his family in his portrait was odd because, and again, I'm paraphrasing, because um, it was the city council that elected him to be mayor and not his family. And though that is true, when I saw the portrait, I was reminded that family is extremely important to the everyday lives of everyday Llewellyans, as well as our elected officials, because it is our families that are the first to support us when we choose to enter any line of service, whether it be in the military or civil servants. And it is our families who get to celebrate with us and sit in the, fir the front row when we are inaugurated. And it is your families who give you the strength and the support that we need to make decisions that may be unpopular in your family that provides you the support to deal with those consequences and those scathing comments that we frequently get for speaking up for what we believe in. I'm sure by now that many of you are thinking that I'm pro-Murphy, um, and in truth, I did vote for Patrick Murphy. Um, in this past election, I voted, and I was honored to vote for several of you, and I would do it again. Um, I do have an opinion on Mayor Murphy's tenure, but I'm not here to talk about how I feel about him personally. I felt compelled to speak in front of all of you tonight because I'm concerned that the strong and passionate opinions of some Llewellyans, which, every, which they would have a right to, ultimately will lead to the unfair restriction of others who have differing opinions. Choosing to reject this portrait because we think, because it's different than what we traditionally see because we don't like how it makes us feel or we don't understand it, is choosing to silence someone else's opinion of their experience or their life. And I think that is a dangerous and destructive message. And I honestly don't believe that anyone on our city council would intentionally send a message like that to not just the people of the city, but people who are watching and paying attention to what we do. The suggestion that former mayor Murphy has turned his back on the city or people in the city and that he needs to be told how to act or that his portrait should be displayed in a location away from the public eye because to some he's an embarrassment or a poor reflection of the city council, to me personally I feel like is a slap in the face to people who are supporters of the mayor and maybe share some of his opinions or just share his opinions may not be his supporters. I think that it sends a clear message to those with opinions that differ from the city councils or what is popular to actual Lowellians that they have no place or need to be told what to do or that they may not actually be Lowellians. Um, our city is not deserving of this message. Our country isn't deserving of this message and nor the implications and consequences of that. So finally, I'd like to urge you all to proceed cautiously should you choose to decide to consider changing the guidelines for the mayor's portrait, especially when the motivation could be interpreted as having strong roots in personal sentiments that citizens may have very different and strong opinions about. As the home of a thriving community of artists and birthplace of artists of time since past, like James McNeil Whistler, Betty Davis, and controversial celebrities like Jack Kerouac, art has and continues to play an important part in the legacy of our city. Just on the logo above you, Mayor Elliott, it reads that art is the handmade of human good. Portraits are forms of art that tell stories that outlive their subjects. Changing the guidelines for mayoral portraits will subject our current and future leaders to shape their legacies according first to the opinion and will of others. It is a bold, bold gesture to impose one's own beliefs upon the sharing of the legacies of another. We will always have differing opinions of those we choose to elect or recognize as leaders and what they do and what they don't do. But I don't believe that anyone has the right to police the area or opportunity that others have where they can decide how they are recorded in history. I'd like to thank you all again for your attention and your time, and most importantly, to your service to all of the people in the city of Lowell. Thank you.